In this video, we're going to go through some of the host settings within .NET Nuke 7. Now the host settings, similar to the site settings, which we covered in a, in a previous video, are settings found within the control panel. Now you do have to be logged in with a host or a super user account, and you're going to navigate over the host menu, and we're going to choose the host settings option. Now the host settings provides a number of different settings for .NET Nuke as a platform that you can go through and configure. There are a number of different tabs across the top of the host settings page. We'll start with the basic settings tab. Within the configuration area, we see one setting that we can actually change. That is the check for upgrades option. That will go out and look to see if there are any new upgrades available for your .NET Nuke installation. Everything else within the configuration is just basic information about the installation of .NET Nuke. You can see the application pool, you can see the physical path, you can see what the time on the server is. If we move past the configuration section, we'll get into the host details. Now within the host details, we can choose a host website. It's not very common that you would need to change this setting, but if you were using .NET Nuke to host multiple websites, you might want to configure the default website as your host website. We'll also go ahead and define the host title and the host URL. Those are not utilized unless you have a .NET Nuke skin that is utilizing those settings. It's not very common that they actually would be utilized though. Same thing goes for the host email address, except for the host email is utilized within a couple of different locations within .NET Nuke. So you'd want to apply a valid email address there on the website. The fallback skin doc type is a setting that's typically not utilized, but it really depends on the skin that you're using on your website. If you have a skin or a theme that's applied to the website that does not have a doc type defined, this setting will then be utilized. I would recommend that you utilize either XHTML transitional or maybe even upgrade to HTML5. So I'll go ahead and configure transitional here. Once again, that setting will only be used if you have a skin that does not have a doc type defined. The last setting within host details is the enable remember me on login controls. This allows users to click a checkbox when they're logging in and remain logged in utilizing a cookie. In the appearance section of the host settings, we find a couple of different options. The first option is show copyright credits. You're going to go ahead and you're going to uncheck that option when you first install and set up .NET Nuke. What that will actually do is remove the copyright statements from the HTML of the pages that get rendered by .NET Nuke. You do not have to show copyright information within DNN, so you can go ahead and turn that off. After that, we have a use custom error messages and custom module CSS settings. You're going to go ahead and leave both of those enabled as they're fairly safe to leave those enabled so that your website will display generic error messages and custom modules can have their own CSS. Then we get into our host skin and our edit skin and our edit container and the host container options. Typically, you don't need to worry about the host skin or the edit skin from the host settings, you would control or configure the skin for your site in the site settings, and the, also the edit skin for your site in the site settings. What happens is these settings are utilized for any website that does not have an, a skin defined at the site settings level. It's not very common that you would run across that scenario. After the appearance section, we have a payment settings section. If you're utilizing payments within .NET Nuke, you can configure the payment processing here, utilizing PayPal. You can also charge hosting fees for the various websites within your .NET Nuke installation. You can control the amount of space, the pages, the user numbers that those websites can have within .NET Nuke. It's not very common that people would be configuring the payment settings. After that, we have an advanced settings section. In the advanced settings area, we're going to find a setting or a section here for friendly URL settings. We can disable friendly URLs if we would like to, and .NET Nuke will go back to a query string based URL. It's not very common that you would need to disable those or make changes, but you can customize friendly URLs here within the host settings. After that, we have another setting that's not very commonly used. If your web server sits behind a proxy server, in order for that web server to see the internet, then you would need to configure the proxy server settings. 
if you want your web server to be able to send email or your .NET Nuke website to be able to send email, you need to configure the SMTP server information. Now it's very common that you would have your SMTP server on the same server as the website. So your SMTP server might be localhost. If you have an external service, you could type in the address of that external service. And if it uses authentication, you can use either basic or NTLM authentication. Now, after you configure SMTP within .NET Nuke, you should test your SMTP settings. If it's successful, you'll see a message on the screen that tells you the email was sent. After you test the SMTP settings, you do still have to be sure to update the settings with the buttons down below. After SMTP settings, we have our performance settings section. We're going to go ahead and configure our performance settings in the recommended approach. We're going to choose the page state persistence of page. For the module caching provider, we're going to go ahead and choose memory. Same thing for the page output caching provider. Now when we choose our cache setting, we're going to go ahead and choose heavy. We want to try to cache as much information in our .NET Nuke website as we can so that we have a better performing website. And then finally, we don't need to customize the authenticated cache ability setting. After that, we have a jQuery settings section. Here we can see which version of jQuery is currently installed and utilized in our .NET Nuke website. We can also choose to utilize a hosted jQuery version if we would like to. Typically, you don't need to go in and make any changes to the jQuery settings section. After that, we can go into the CDN settings, which will allow us to use content delivery networks from Microsoft for Ajax tools and also from Telerik for some of their tools as well. So you can check those options if you would like. And then finally, we have a client resources management section here within the host settings. Client resources management allows you to increase the performance of your website by creating what are known as composite files. .NET Nuke has a variety of JavaScript and CSS files that get loaded by the platform. Basically, .NET Nuke will combine all of the CSS files into one and all of the JavaScript files into a JS file, allowing a visitor's browser to then download one file for each of those types instead of having to download multiple. We also have an option here where we can minify the CSS or the JavaScript, which will remove all unnecessary comments and extra spacing out of those files. We'll go ahead and enable composite files here and the minification of CSS and JavaScript. Also under the host settings page, we have an other settings tab. Within other settings, we have a number of options that we can go through and configure. We'll go through and configure some of those common ones. In other settings, you're typically not going to make any changes to the, the first five or six settings. You may come in and enable users online if you're allowing your website's visitors to log in and you want to keep track of where they are. You can enable users online and then utilizing various tools display a list of all the users who are online. We can also customize how long after an account is locked, meaning someone failed to log in successfully. If they fail five times in five minutes, they'll automatically be locked out. You can control how soon after that occurs they get unlocked. From there, we can also customize the allowable file extension. So if we want to allow certain users on our website to be able to upload specific types of files, we can add the extension for those files into the list here. We have a scheduler mode option here, which has three options, disabled, timer, and method. I'm going to go ahead and configure that to be a timer method. Basically what this means is the scheduled tasks within .NET Nuke will be executed on a timer as opposed to strictly waiting for requests when visitors are browsing the website. We're also going to go ahead and enable the event log buffer here in the next option, which will store any event log information into the memory on the server. And then there's a scheduled task that runs every 60 seconds that will take that information out of memory and write that into the event log table in the database. There's a help URL option here. If we want to point the help resources within our .NET Nuke installation to a different URL, we can change that here. It's not very common that you would do so unless you were to write your own help documentation for the website. Then down below, 
we might want to enable content localization within our website. If we do, we can go ahead and check that box. That will allow us to then start to localize our content across multiple languages. And then finally, we have a couple of options around the messaging and postback options within the host settings here. But we've gone through and configured all of our host settings that we want to configure. We're going to go ahead and click on update and that will save the host settings for our .nuke7 website.